Welcome, welcome, patrons. So if you watched the Andraste video, you may have noticed that Andraste didn't actually start the Chantry, just spread the belief that worshipping the Maker would bring him back to create a paradise. But she didn't exactly spread the way on how to worship this new Maker. See, after her death, small pockets of Maker worshippers would do their own thing for about 160 years until one man decided to unite them. He's not really talked about that much in the games, but he's probably one of the most influential men in Thetis history. So let's talk about Cordillus Draken. Childhood Cordillus Draken was born to Septimus and Castana Draken. Septimus was actually from Deventer, and as the story goes, he was the youngest son of Lord Vanderin Draken. The Draken family was a declining line, and for the most part, no one actually cared that their non-mage son was married to a daughter of a Syrian chieftain. So then, Septimus and his new wife lived in what is now Orle with the Syrian people. Now, the Syrian for ages had been ruled by a Gothi, or queen, and while Septimus wasn't really good at much, he was able to advise his wife Castana on how Tevinter managed his politics, which gave her an edge. So, in negative 36 ancient, Castana was named the new Gothi, with Cordillus born soon after. As the world of Thetis tells us, Cordillus was raised knowing that he could only be on the throne if he had the strength to take it. At the time, the young Orle was about half the size as it is in current Thetis, and the different Syrian tribes only were united in their love for the Maker and Andraste and hatred of everybody else. The young Draken would then have a vision, in which he believed Andraste came to him in a dream and charged him with redeeming the world in the eyes of the Maker. Now, This vision he actually wrote down and even rewrote a few times, and is actually included in the Chant of Light. We actually got a mostly full version of it in World of Thetis, and it's pretty juicy, let me tell you, I'm kind of excited to talk about it, so for the sake of keeping this centered on Draken, we will talk about his vision in full when I go over the Chant of Light. His quest began in full when he was only 16 years old, going to battle with other Andraste cults whose rituals differed from his. Adulthood When Draken finally turned 18, he married a daughter of a Valshavan lord named, oh boy, Aria Montalurs. Er Aria? Montaloris? I don't know. Anyway, while the marriage did unify a large amount of land, Aria or Aria, I don't know, was also a skilled archer and tactician. By all accounts, Aria or Aria was not the fairest, but when Cordillus witnessed her shoot the wings off a bumblebee at 100 paces, he was instantly smitten. As a wedding gift, he gave her the finest golden bow crafted by the mages of Aureo, saying that together they will spread the light of the Maker. Together, the two transformed Orle from a collection of city-states into an empire, and their Orle included much of modern-day Navarra and Ferelden as well. Now, a quick note is that at the time, there were tons of nobles across current Orle that held all sorts of range of titles, and the grand game, despite being pretty young, was tearing the nation apart. Draken did his best to level the playing field, and in his new nation, the only titles other than Emperor were Lord and Lady. This, however, would kind of be changed after his death, and even at the time, people would still collect unofficial titles, but his hatred of the game was well known. Anyway, Draken began to meet heavy resistance in the north, and fearing that he had lost the Maker's favor due to the god questioning his devotion, he refocused from empire building to religion making. He tore down an ancient Syrian fortress that once belonged to Jesuvish, and used the foundation to create the first chantry. Now, while it was being built, Draken searched for four years for the perfect leader for this new church and finally found Justinia I. Now, Justinia I's real name was actually Olesa and was the only female general in Draken's exalted march. The name Justinia was taken from one of the first disciples of Mandraste. So, this is where the Chantry as we know it was born, along with her new calendar that uses the age system. So, from here on out, we no longer are in the ancient era, but rather the first age, the divine age. Thanks for looking up for the young emperor and his new religion. However, only four years into their new calendar, the second blight began in the Anderfels. Draken rallied every warrior he could against the archdemon, along with every mage, which at the time was very controversial. And let's take a quick detour to talk about mages. As we learn in Jaws of Hack on DLC, one of Dracon's oldest friends, uh, now how old it's never actually stated, but uh, one of his closest friends was Inquisitor Emeridan. At the time, the Inquisition of Old was tasked to save Thetis from the threat of mages and strange magic. About 20 years after the Chantry was formed, the Inquisition and the Chantry signed the Navarran Accord, in which the Inquisition pledged service to this new church. The group was split into two branches, the Templars and the Seekers of Truth, with Emeridan leading the new Seekers and the Chantry leading the Templars. 
all of this is noteworthy because Ameridan was a Dalish mage. Draken was friends and highly respected and trusted an elven mage, a friendship that would not only be forgotten, but outright erased from history. It's also suspected that Ameridan or his lover, another elven mage named Talana, would have been the first leader of Draken's new circle. The actual first leader of the circle was Lothair Harduin. Oh, I'm so bad at French, I'm sorry guys, <laughs> um, who stood out in a battle during the Second Blight. From the timeline, it seems that Ameridan and or Talana turned down the offer as the circle was started around the same time as the Navarran Accord. So likely the two wanted to continue on with their adventures as seekers rather than a comfy desk job in a circle. And as history goes, Dracon begged the two to stop pack on Smarsh into LA as it would have been too difficult dealing with two deadly dragons at the same time. Sadly, Ameridan and his companions never returned, despite mostly stopping the threat. Now, funny enough, Draken's strong push against the Blight ended up spreading his Chant of Light and Andraste more than he ever did in his Holy Quest. Due to his quick response to the Anderfels, both the Anders people and even the Wardens were quick to adopt his new faith, and the Anders declared themselves part of the Eurlesian Empire. As the Second Blight spread across the Free Marches in Navarra, so did Draken and his religion. And when he finally passed away in 145 Divine, he had created both the most powerful religion and nation in Thetis, and laid the groundwork that would stop the Second Blight. Legacy So with all of this, Cordilla seemed like a pretty decent fellow and very far off from the Chantry and Orlais we know today. So what happened? Well, a lot actually, and some I'm not even going to mention in this video, but for the most part what happened was his son, Cordillus II. To make a very long story short, Cordillus Jr. wasn't very much like his father at all. He did a little to help out allies in the ending throes of the Blight, and in the end, many villages were wiped out and bridges burned. The Enderfels would reclaim their freedom rather than be ruled under Cordillus II, and later he would help divine Renata I in her quest against the Dales, gaining land for Orlay but wiping out the land of the elves and cementing the elven place in modern Thetis. Not long after, in 214 Glory, Draken's tomb was plundered after Valrio was sacked by the elven armies during the Exalted March on the Dales. While a large bounty was put out to reclaim these pieces, none have actually been found. So now, all that is left of Draken is an impressive memory and a ton of statues. And that, dear patrons, is all that we know on Cordillus Draken. Do you still think grand questions? Proof that I'm wrong? Comments about your own fan theory. Feel free to tweet me at, at Gildarthon on Twitter or send a PM to user Gillanon on Reddit. Dresh